and welcome into another program of It's Tyler Digger. In case you're watching for the first time, this program is designed to talk about all the good positive things going on in and around Tyler the city that's open for business. We've had various uh, guests on here throughout. I uh, have singers and, and uh, poetry writers and, and politicians and whatever. And today we're, we're honored to have a longtime friend and also uh, Mr. Cabot Barden has been on our show before. He's a owner of a store in Tyler Liga, he and Miss Libby, and he's also a publisher. He's a songwriter. He's a singer. Uh, I, I think he can probably do about anything. Plays instruments, and uh, it's just not indeed an honor to have a cabinet back with us. Cabot, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. That's uh, for those who may have never seen you before, may have missed the program throughout and, and don't know anything about you. Let's let's give a little bit of background about Cabot Barden, where you. Uh, what was that, an old age, where you was reared up, uh, where you was started off in life? Yeah, I grew up in Sylacauga, uh, on the west side of town. Uh, went to Sylacauga High and then went off to college for a couple of years and um, got married. Started playing in bands when I was 14 years old and played in bands just most of my life. Um, didn't start writing books till I was Oh, 1986, I started the book, and I didn't finish it till 2009, the first one. Then after that, it just one right behind the other. Now I've gotten four under my belt and working on the fifth one. And we'll talk about those in just a little bit, but you say you went to a couple years of college? Yep. Uh, any, any name that you're not ashamed to mention? or <laughs> <laughs> I went to a Nunley Technical That's College. That's good. That's a good... Yep. good start. I went there for a year, and then I went to Alexander City Junior College okay. for a year. Yeah, that's a very good school down there. Yep. Then you, uh, after you got out of school, you said you got married. Yep. What have you done? Worked in the mill? What have you done through the past? i uh, worked a lot of retail jobs over the years. Uh, been involved with music. Like I said, I started playing when you were Playing in bands when I was in my teens. Uh, was playing in nightclubs when I was 16. So. What was the uh, guitar the first instrument you learned to play? Or? Well, the first thing I, I played was drums, and then I was trying to put a band together when I was 14, being a drummer, and everybody else wanted to be the drummer. I said, well, i got to play something else. So I picked up the accordion, because my dad played the accordion, and I started playing that, and I thought, this is not cool in a rock band, playing the accordion. Hmm. So I picked up the guitar and started playing that. Accordion is very popular in Germany. Yeah. I, uh, I was in Munich for a couple of years, and of course I started playing piano when I was 10, and uh, I saw this black and white accordion. That was the prettiest thing I've ever, ever laid eyes on. Yeah. Full, 120 bass. Uh, wow. And <laughs> of course, trying to figure out what black button over here with your left hand and your right hand is a keyboard. Yeah. And then you get your hand in that strap there and you, I, I could find middle C and I could sort of go from there, but uh, you, you gotta you gotta get it to moving yeah. to get that sound. Yeah. But in Germany, those uh, the Germans had those bands over there. Yeah. And Munich got the, uh, what do they call it, uh, Opera House. They had those uh, bands with 8, 10, 15, 20 people in them. Yeah. They'd play those accordions and dance all over the place, moving that accordion, it's, it's amazing. Yep. Makes a lot of music, Yep. if you know what you're doing. Yep, my dad played one for years. He was a band director for the Sea Scouts in Savannah years okay. ago. And, and of course, Mom played piano, so that's where our, my musical background came from. Your mother played for any particular group for a while, or gospel, or just... no? She just played at home. She and Dad would do duets and okay. stuff like that. What uh, you remember? One of the, some of the bands you were involved with through the years? Uh, I was playing in a band when I was 19 called Common Faith, which a bunch of local guys out of Sylacauga. More than half the guys are deceased now. Um, and we played together for about three years. We did a lot of great stuff together. Uh, came close to going to that next plateau of, of actually doing something in the music business. We went up and recorded at Muscle Shoals, uh, at one of the big studios up there. And the guy was talking about a re record contract. And then the guy was playing lead guitar with us. He quit. So that was it. We lost that deal. It's hard to uh, hold a group together. It is. We. Uh... I played for the Bill Cobb Trio in 50, 58, I guess it was, Bill Cobb and his two daughters. They were four and five years old at the time. And, and you don't think about kids that young singing, but they had it down. Mm. They had one of the hottest trio going. And we were going, we were traveling everywhere. I played for them for about 
about six months, I guess. Yeah. That was my first first record to make was with Bill Cobb Trio. Wow. And uh, of course, he held it together because it was a family group. Yeah. And then I started playing for the Pioneer Quartet when I got back out of service in '65. And uh, we traveled in the same, what, 30, 35 years. Never missed an engagement. Mm. Uh, kept the same party personnel for the most time. But it's unusual that you can keep a group together because of the faction. The wives don't want you to go this Sunday. They got something they want yeah. to go to. <laughs> and, uh, but we, it's, it's tough trying to keep a group together, and I can understand. Yeah. After, uh, as, as you got older in life, uh, are you, you still playing now? Oh uh, well, I'm not playing in clubs anymore. I retired from that a, a year and a half ago. Uh, got burnt out on it because I'm too old to do it. I mean, the hours are getting later. You know, ten to two in clubs, and I just club atmosphere is just not for me anymore. You know, things change when you change through the years. From yeah, what used to be real real country music is. I, I guess you still got some country music, a, a true country music. But it's changed, just like gospel music it used to be true Southern gospel. Yeah. Now I call it singing off the wall when you go to the church. They got this uh, three or four lines, and you sing the same lines for thirty minutes, and yeah, the same <laughs> beat. And some yeah. of this rock music you got, you get two notes and scream and holler two words. Yeah. And well, I, I lived in Nashville for about five years, and and uh, what they said is pretty much true. They said that country follows rock and pop by about twenty years. So what you hear in rock and pop 20 years ago is what you're hearing in, in country now. It sounds like rock yeah. instead of country, which I don't really care for that. I'd rather go back to the old country because that, that's country. Genuine country. Yeah. Yeah, George Jones. George Jones, Hank, even Hank Jr. I mean, that's closer to real country than what you're hearing now on the radio. You've got, uh, you, you see a group come up, very popular, hit, have a hit record, Six months, you don't hear them anymore. Yep. Somebody else comes along and takes over. Yep, that's the way it goes. It's all about sales. Oh, Southern gospel music, church hymns, uh, Amazing Grace, and all these old songs that you could all, everybody could sing along with. Them. Nowadays, you hear this new modern stuff. People don't sing along with that music. <laughs> you hear it one time or two times, and, yeah. and maybe, maybe I'm just being fanatical. I just love gospel, Southern gospel music. I think that that's one reason why uh, they simplified got the new gospel, the new what they call uh, contemporary Christian. They simplified it where you just sing one line over and over, you know, so you'll know that line and you'll just keep singing it instead of like the old gospel you're talking about, which there was always a story behind it. But now it's just you know, sing two or three lines. Make it up as you go along. Yeah. It feels good to do it. Yeah. Swing and sway with the music. When the music stops, the religion is gone. Religion is gone. Yeah. <laughs> Feel good religion. Yeah. I know. I probably I'll probably get some cards and letters on that. <laughs> but let's talk about. Uh, first of all, let's talk about your store. How did you get involved in my music store? Well, uh, I'd written my first book and I got residuals from it pretty good and and uh, I'd met Libby and we got married and. There was no music stores in Talladega, and I hated going all the way to Aaron's just to buy guitar strings. I'm not sure it was one. It was the one in Sylacauga at the time, or Childerburg. Uh, Garris Pawn Shop's about the only thing in Sylacauga. For the music, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I said, well, let's open a music store because she had that uh, building sitting up there when she and Ronnie Butler had the pawn shop there, and uh, I said, well, let's just open a music store there, and so we did, and there we are. <laughs> yeah, we were there for the ribbon cutting, and uh, you got a. Nice uh, supply of goods. If we can, let's show the uh, the video or the, the DVD or whatever we got showing his music store. I believe they have it somewhere on the computer. They'll show it in just a minute. Yep. But you're well stocked. Yep. We try to. There we go. Good there's a, there's the my music store. That's oh, like it. That. Is that a fiddle? <laughs> yep. <laughs> or a violin, whichever violin, way you want yeah, to call there's it. Violin. Yeah. There's your uh, drums and. Electric guitar. What's this on the right here? I know it's a guitar for some doors. Yeah, it's a rock guitar. Rock guitar, okay. You got a very diverse group of instruments. Yeah, we have a jam session there once a month, the last Thursday of the month from about five to about eight or nine. Have about 25, 30 musicians come in and play. Now folks, you that don't know what jam session is, that ain't bread and jam. 
Uh, that's, a, that's what they call music, they jam. Some of us young boys don't know what a jam session is. They think you're going to eat some jam and biscuit. <laughs> no, I'm being facetious. There's, There's a, a uh, that's pictures of the jam session. Okay. There. Is that uh, Johnny McKinnon? Yep. Okay. Johnny McKinnon plays the guitar. Yeah. Who are some of the folks that? Uh, uh, Lynn Smith. He's always there. He plays. He's from Sulacaga. He's from Talladega. Oh, Tal Okay. Uh, Carol Stober. Yeah, I know Miss Carol. Her and her uh, granddaughter. Yep. Used to sing, uh, and George Campbell he plays the the dobro. Um, have people, Tommy Little he comes in and plays bass occasionally, and, and a whole bunch of musicians, men and women. Some people just come and sit and listen. You know we have a great time. And if Mr. Engineer, if, if we're not too much trouble, can we go back to that uh, DVD just for a moment? Just uh, I want to look at something other here. I'm not sure what I want to look at. But I want to, if we can go back to it. Anyway, while while they're going back to it, we can. Uh, and you you have a jam session once a month. Yep, last Thursday, from about five in the evening until about eight or nine. When us old folks get tired, <laughs> we we quit about eight or nine. You have everything but a piano, and you have keyboards, I guess. You have. Yeah, we have keyboards. Yep. Anybody plays the trumpet or the saxophone or? No. No. Lynn's a tuba player. He's the only uh, wind instrument guy that comes. Wouldn't mind having a few trumpet and whatever. We had one guy come in and brought his uh, saxophone and played. I love saxophone and trumpet. Yep, I do too. What, uh, stick with old stuff, old country music? Just whatever. Modern stuff, just. We do bluegrass, uh, gospel, uh, old country, new country, old rock, and that's pretty much it. Maybe starts blues. At, starts at what time? About five o'clock in the evening. That's once a month. Yep. You, uh, we'll give it before we go off there. Also, we might look in the camera here. And, here we go. Let's go back to the video just for a second. There. Uh, there's your different uh, instruments. Now, that one in the middle there, it'll be around bottom. Yeah, that was a banjo. That's what I was thinking, banjo. Yep. There's some electric stuff. Uh, there are bongo drums. Congas. Uh, Not okay. Regular drums. We've got bongos. There's the amplifiers. Yep. You carry just about anything, any musician. There's your keyboard. Yep. Any, any, uh. Those are my books on top. Okay. You care about anything that uh, someone could need or want. Yeah, if we can get it, you know, we we'll If you can't, that. don't care, you can get it probably. We can what, order it, yeah. A few days, just a short while. Yep. There's some of your folks again. Yep. Who's the guy on the left back here, the gray-headed fella? That is Bill Oliver. Okay. He looks familiar. Yeah. He's from where? He's from Talladega. Talladega, okay. Yeah, yeah we'll go back. Let's, uh, y'all not doing any record making. You not. You don't no. have a group en enough groups together to... No. Got uh, a DVD or, or, I guess you could take a, a camera and set it up and make a DVD out of it. Actually, one of the guys that comes to our sessions, he's been... Uh, videotaping a few of the sessions, but I don't know if he'd want to turn loose of them or not. <laughs> well, if you make it just for on your own use, maybe then the folks around town, individuals will want a copy of it. Yeah, and I'll have to talk to him about yeah. it. Let's talk about the books. Let's talk about, uh, let's see, your first book was... Uh, it's The Bass Player. The Bass Player. Yep. How did you, uh, how did you get involved in writing a book about The Bass Player? Well, one of my favorite authors is Clive Custler. I met him in 89, and uh, in 86, I first picked up my first copy of one of Custler's books, and I got inspired. I said, well, I can write. I can write something. I'm a songwriter. I can write maybe books. So I started writing my memories from playing in a band when I was 19, and uh, then I put it down. Life got in the way, and uh, finally, in 2000, I was unemployed, had nothing to do, and I said, well, I'm just going to finish the book since I'm sitting here with nothing to do. So you know, I hold that thought there just a minute. People say, well, I can write, and you said, I can write, I can write. But it's not that simple. No. I have to be, I may be woke up at midnight, 2 o'clock in the morning, yep. something in my mind, and if I don't get up right then and put it down, I said, well, I'll remember it in the morning. No, you won't. Yep. Six o'clock next morning, you say, what was, I, what was I talking about last night? What was I thinking? So you have to be, I guess, in the right mood. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah. I know when I was at Eglin, uh, I had plenty of time on my hands to write, 
sometime at midnight, I'd be there in my cube. Yeah. And I'd start writing and it just it just flows, you know. Yep. I might be two or three weeks before I'd write anything else. Yep, that's the way it is. Even with songwriters the same way. They'll get an idea for a song in the middle of the night and get up, put it down and next day they'll pick the guitar up, what did I write? Yeah. <laughs> how how'd this song go? Yeah. If you don't have a tape recorder, you yeah. Boop. But back to you talking about you started writing <clears throat> and uh you lay it down, then you get started back and pick yep. it up from there. Yeah, so I finished it in 2009. That's and, the bass player, yeah. right? So, yeah. And uh, went on, online and hunted for a, a decent uh, publisher. There's a lot of publishers out there. A lot of scam artists out yeah, there. Yeah, there are. <laughs> a lot of them. No, don't get caught, Bo, if you want to publish yeah. a book. Be careful. That's, that's why we formed the uh, Writers Guild in Sylacauga, uh, to help people watch out for stuff like that. Uh, we have a local chapter of the uh, Central Alabama Writers Guild that meets at the museum once a month, the second Monday of the, each month at the museum in Sylacauga. Uh, but anyway, um, I finished the book, found a good publisher, went with them, and that one, it was like an explosion. I mean, it just took off. And I said, well, I need to follow this up. So I wrote a second book, and it's called Toby's Mixed Blessings which is a continuation of the first story. Uh, and that one did great, so I went for a third one. I went back and took the story of how my mom and dad met in Savannah, Georgia, and uh, put that in the book, and then came back to, um, came back to the uh, story of my original characters in the first and second book. Then the uh, fourth book is totally different. It's not about musicians. In the third book. Huh? It's the third book you wrote. Third book is Dynamite Runs in the Family. Right, that was. Yeah. This is the fourth book, Shamrock yeah. and Scalaway. Yeah, fourth book. And the third book was about what? It was about my mom and dad. Oh, that's one time. Okay, yeah. okay. How they met, and then it comes back to the story of uh, Toby Martin, which is the main character in, in the first and second book, and how he made, finally makes it to the Grand Ole Opry, and he, his band goes to become famous. And the, now, all these books are they're based on true facts, but they're more or less fiction. Yeah, they are mostly fiction. Um, the fourth one is about my ancestors, the Bartons, which I use the name Barton in the book. Now, there's a bunch of Bartons at Scallywags. There are? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bunch of Scallywags in our Barton family. <laughs> yeah, I know a couple of them <laughs> hey, my Some folks around town say I'm one of them. <laughs> but no, we have, most of our folks were from around Dalton, Rome, Lindale. Yep. All up through the... Mine were from Fitzgerald and down that way in Irwinville. And that's where most of mine... Were. They were, most of my folks were cotton mill folks. Yep. Worked in the cotton mill all their life. Farmed in cotton mill. Yep. But shamrocks, what a what a diversity. Shamrocks, scallywags. Yeah, shamrocks is because most of my folks were Irish. Right. They uh, came over here in 1836 from Dublin, Ireland. And... Uh, it's, the story starts out about how they uh, started out down South Georgia. Uh, the John Barton went to work for the railroad down there, and uh, the railroad company folded, so he ended up having to move his family onto a plantation, and they became indentured servants on a plantation down there. Different title here, working for the railroad. That's starting off the, the book you're talking about. Yep. Bill Court Sarah. Uh, What's this about? Let's talk about Bill and Sarah. Well, yeah, that, that was uh, one of John one of Barton's characters. sons. Yeah, he started courting Sarah O'Hara, which is the plantation owner's daughter. Was that uh, kosher in those days? I've not had a chance to read the book, so I don't know where he was. Well, they were both Irish and Catholic, so they, you know. It was working out okay then. Yep. And some of the lingo in here, you're, you're you're using the dialect. Of yeah, Irish. there's a lot of Gaelic in there. A lot of what? Gaelic, which is the Irish language. Irish lingo. Yep. Okay. Some of the other chapters in here that. Uh, and that one has a ghost in it. Cow thieves added again in the murder of a good man. Cow thieves added again. So the cow thieves, here, oh, a mean, mean, Michaela. Micheline. Micheline. Some tinker cow thieves and death of another Donahue. Yeah, 
The Donahues in that book are the are the villains. They're, they're sort of like uh, what's his old Western bunch. Yeah, it's always a fighting Hatfields and McCoys. Yeah, Hatfields and McCoys. <clears throat> yeah, you had the Ohara Plantation, then you had the Donahue Plantation, which were just at, right down the road from each other. And they other. were at each other's cattle or each other's throat. Yeah, the O'Hara's were really good people, and the Donahues were a bunch of scoundrels, scallywags. Scallywags. Yeah. And they were always getting in trouble and, and causing trouble. Barrel of a good man. A ghost shows up, a conviction in freeing the slaves. Let's hear about the ghost. Uh, the ghost is uh, Aiden Donahue. He is the only good Donahue in the whole bunch. So he's a good ghost. Yeah, he he uh, he sits back and he watches all the stuff that the Donahues are doing, all the dastardly deeds. And uh, so finally he has an opportunity to do right the wrongs, and so he does so in the book. A hanging and romance blooms between James and Johnny May. Who got hung? Did did uh, Johnny May or Johnny get hung because they married each other? Or? No, uh, Micheline Donahue was hanged because he murdered uh, Patrick O'Hara from the O'Hara plantation. So uh, they, they hanged Micheline for a uh, murder. You don't have a lot of that stuff nowadays. They just everybody just moves in. For a while, then moves out. Yep. You don't have much marriage and romance, and it just not now. <laughs> girl, boy meets girl, and he falls. Madeline. I started to say Madeline bed. Madeline. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Madeline bed. That's it. Lasts about thirty minutes or thirty yeah. days. Yeah. Move on. They, they fall in love again. Yep. <laughs> you talk about uh, Andrew going to war. Georgia succeeds. Yep. Uh, Andrew goes to war. Prison break. Philip and his troubadours of trouble. That yeah. sounds interesting. That's a good, interesting chapel, chapter. Yeah, Philip Donahue, one of the villains. <laughs> it's it's a real interesting story. Now, Andrew goes off to war. Okay, in the prison break. Who's in prison? Uh, Philip Donahue. Uh, he's in prison. Yeah. How does he break out? They uh, they're on the road gang, busting up okay. rocks on the road, and uh, they go for a, a restroom break, and they jump the guards and get away. Or the chain? Yeah. But the guards had a shotgun, so they shot the chains off. Okay. And uh, got away. And Andrew, that's my grandfather's grandfather, he fought in the Civil War. He was wounded in his first battle at Seven, Seven Pines in Virginia. Let's, uh, a couple more chapters. We got another DVD we want to show. Uh, Getting home and talking to a is this the same ghost? Wasn't it? Gunfight, yep. the ghost, and the duel. Yep. War as hell, guarding prisoners, being an artilleryman, and going home. And then the ghost shows up again. Yep. Yeah, the ghost is in there quite a bit. Is this a book you would want to read late at night going to bed with a ghost showing up? Yeah, you'd probably want to read it at night Wouldn't. because the ghost is not like your average uh, horrible, scary kind of ghost if you're a good guy, and if you're a bad guy, it's a different story. <laughs> yeah. He's not the ghost that walks in with a knife and... Uh, no, no. He, <laughs> the things he does, he does not directly kill anybody. Uh, he does not shoot anybody, doesn't stab anybody, but uh, there's one guy in, in the book that he does away with because the guy it, had killed a bunch of people at Donahue Plantation. Okay. I believe we got another DVD uh, you want to explain what we're fixing to see? This is the uh, commercial for my fourth book. Okay. Shamrocks and scallywags. Beautiful setting there. You don't see many of those old trains. There's a cotton field. My, my uncle, my mother's sister. He had about a hundred acres and it clouded with a mule and a one, whatever you call it, cloud. Some of them had two or three uh, discs. Yeah. Now, any of these folks related? No, I know he's not related to you, but any of those pictures there, is that the ghost? Yeah. And 
Talladega uh -huh. in the book. I asked them permission down to do that. Down on Sulacaga Highway? Yep. Yeah. And, uh, it's a beautiful setting down there. Yeah. Had a whole bunch of great pictures, but like I said, they didn't allow pictures just yet, so maybe in the next... Well, we have a reprint at some point in time, they can include the uh, picture. Yep. That's neat. Some good pictures, good, yeah. good, uh, good settings and so forth. Yeah, thank you. What, uh, let's talk a little bit about how any of your books, how you can get the books. Other than, I know you can come to the music store and get them. Yeah. But uh, folks may be watching from wherever. If, if you want to order them online, you can get them from Amazon.com, America Star Books, which is my publisher, uh, Barnes & Noble, you can order it through them, and Books A Million. Or you can just call me or, or email me and I'll be glad to send you one autographed. Price of the books? They went down. They were twenty four ninety five originally. Now they're nine ninety nine. That's a deal. Because you can't even. Uh, I, I talked to my printer in Birmingham recently about maybe having. I got three books published. About having some reprinted, and <laughs> they're costing more than I'm selling them for. Yeah. I didn't realize the cost of ink and, and paper had gone up so high. Yeah. It's unreal. Well, that's that's a good uh, good deal. Let's, uh, we've got another couple of minutes, so let's, let's don't leave out uh, Miss Libby. She's the lady behind the scene, runs the store. Yep, she's at the store today. Keeps your clothes washed and ironed. Yep, keeps me taken care of. She's a great lady. She, Tyler. Yep. We grew, we, grew, we went to Sylacauga High together. I didn't know her then. Uh, I knew her deceased husband, Ronnie. He and I hung out when we were teenagers. They but, were business people in Tyler for many years. Yep. Yep. Had a lot of friends, a lot of customers. Ronnie was a smart man. Yeah. Yeah. Shamrocks and Scallywags, and the other, the, one more time, the bass player. It's the bass player, Toby's Mixed Blessings, and Dynamite Runs in the Family. And the fifth one I'm working on now is called Shillelies and Scoundrels, which is a sequel to the Shamrocks and Scallywags. What's it going to be about? We've still got another minute or so. It, it's, it's a continuation of the, this story here. Shamrocks it picks, and Skelly. Picks up where that one leaves off. The uh, first thing that happens in the four, fifth book is a hanging of one of the guys who killed one of the main characters in the fourth book. You know, of course, we see in news all the time about murder and death penalty. Well, I don't know. Maybe we need to go back to to some old-fashioned hangers and stop some of this crime. It, it would probably slow it down it, a little bit. It might bit. not slow anybody else down, but it should slow that one that committed the crime down. Yeah, it will. He wouldn't be escaping, and, and I guess two guys in New York that escaped recently. Yeah. It's, uh, that's, if they'd have had a hanging back in those days, they wouldn't have been out on the streets. Now. Yeah, that's right. And I hate to say it, but death penalty may be the best be offer to yeah. help straighten out our, our criminal woes. Yeah, but I appreciate you being with us. If you just tuned in, we're fixing to tune out. But uh, our guests have been Cabot Barden. Yep. He and Miss Libby owns my music store in Talladega on Fort Lash Avenue, just this side of Donnie Miller's barbecue place. Yep, right next door. And uh, you were there 10 o'clock in the morning until what? Four 10 to 5, Tuesday through Friday. Close on Saturday and Sunday? Yep. And one more time, we still got, no, we don't. We're out of time. I appreciate you being with us. <laughs> okay. Best of luck to you on these books. See y'all next week.